In this enclosure, I have a rather large female bull snake who is gravid. And in case you don't know, when a gravid snake sheds their skin, it's called a prelay shed. And it means they're within a week or so of laying. And she just shed about four days ago. So we're expecting her eggs pretty soon here. Although I think this lay box is a little too small for her. I'd hate for her to squish the eggs after laying them. So to make her more comfortable, we are going to upgrade this today. There you are. Hi. This is her old lay box, and this will be her new lay box. Here we go, we've got our door made, and I used a welding pen, and I literally just melted away the plastic to make an entrance, and this melts down any points that may otherwise show up if you use a saw or a knife or something, and it makes sure that your snake can't get hurt by the plastic going in and out. Okay, now we are going to fill up our lay box with laying substrate, and there's a lot of different opinions on what to use. Some people use pure vermiculite or perlite, which is what you put your eggs in after they've been laid, but I just use tropical soil mixed with moss. And to be honest, this bull snake has laid in just aspen before because I wasn't expecting her to lay when she did, and she, I guess she was just ready and the eggs were just fine. So I don't think they're as picky as people say they are, but I just use a combination of tropical soil and then I sprinkle this moss around as well. We're actually gonna add a little bit more here. Hi, Mama. You are huge. I cannot wait to see how many eggs we get from you. Now the question is, did I make the door big enough? You're fine, you're fine. Let's see. Man, look at that. She's so thick right until her vent. Those are all eggs right there. Okay, let's put in your box. I'm going to put this on the warm end of her enclosure so it stays nice and humid in there. You're pretty much setting up a humidity box, but with a little extra dirt for the egg laying. Okay, you go on in. That fits in here like perfectly. And I put it in backwards. Mama, go check it out. Let's see if she can fit. Go on in. Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. This style of lay box also makes it convenient to just take out all of the eggs once she does lay. And we can just take off the lid and uh, remove them all pretty easily. And while she's in here, we can just take a peek inside and see if she's laid yet. Last night, our bull snake Brad was very restless. She just couldn't get comfortable, which usually means she's trying to find a place to lay her eggs. So last night could have been the night. It's now the morning after we gave her her nest or her lay box, and I haven't peeked at all. So we're going to check to see if we have eggs. Get this out of the way. Oh, nothing yet. False alarm. Check number two for today. She has not left the lay box since the last time I recorded. Nope. Nothing. Nothing yet. It's been about uh, 10 days since she had her prelay shed. <gasps> oh. We have eggs. I think she might still be laying though. Keep going. I won't bug you. 
Okay, let's see how she's doing. Holy sh! And you are still pumping them out. Okay, I will check back later. While we wait for Brad to lay her eggs, it's time to get the egg incubation material ready. So in the past, I have used vermiculite with decent success, although I've heard really good things about perlite. So we picked up some organic perlite, and we're going to run a little bit of an experiment this time around because I think she'll lay enough eggs to fill up more than just one of these containers in the incubator. So we'll, we'll use two and we'll split the clutch up and everything will stay the same except for the medium we use. So we'll have one for vermiculite and one for perlite. So first we're going to fill them up with the medium. I think I just have barely enough of vermiculite. Yeah, that should... That should work, that's actually a little more than enough, but we'll just use up the whole bag and we'll get our perlite poured in. There we go, you want there to be enough so that you can partially submerge the eggs in the medium, but uh, not cover them completely. Next we're going to pour water in. Now with vermiculite, I know you can mix it 50-50 um, by in forms of weight, not volume, when it comes to mixing water. But after a while, you just kind of get the hang of how much you need. And you don't want there to be so much that when you squeeze it, water drips out. See, this would be too much. So I think it's because I haven't stirred it in completely. But if you do accidentally add too much water, just squeeze it over the sink to drain it until you get to the point where when you squeeze it, that's yeah, a little still too much, when you squeeze it, uh, there isn't any water dripping out. There we go. That should be good. Your hands will get messy, so just accept your fate now. <laughs> just wait till we get to the perlite. This isn't much better. I'm just going to wipe this off on here. So perlite, same thing. Just add your water, but not to the point where it drips when you squeeze it. Now once she's done laying her eggs, we will put them in, but that might take a little while, so we're going to cut for now. Okay, just checking on her. Oh my gosh. There's still one left, it looks like. Maybe two. So we'll give her a little more time to get that last one out, hopefully, without help. Okay, so we're going to take out the eggs, the ones that she's laid anyway, kind of get them out of the way, and into the incubator. Oh, she got the last one out. Sweet, she must have just laid that in the last, like, five minutes. There might be one here, but I think that could just be how she's curved, too, because I think it would have been down here following the other ones. So, perfect timing. I know. That was a ton of work, wasn't it, Brad? You look so grumpy. Grumpier than usual. So we will carefully move her out of the way. Okay. Look at those. Go. We'll get the rest. You're fine, Brad. I don't see a single slug. No. <laughs> this one's a little sluggy looking, yeah, but that's the one that was last, most recently laid. So now we have to split them up because they are attached. Uh, with kind of a, a little adhesive that they make so that this, the eggs spread the heat around the entire clutch to keep them all at the same temperature. But we're going to maintain that temperature in our incubator. So now I have to split them up but make, keep their orientation, which isn't as important in the first 24 hours because within or after the first 24 hours, that's when the embryo attaches to the side of the egg.
We're done splitting them up. We left this group together because there's so much adhesive in between them all. It would take a lot of effort to pull them apart. And they're short enough, they're in the right angle that it won't interfere with the lid being on top. So now we have to mark the highest point of each egg so that we can know which angle or which orientation it was facing. So here we go. And last but not least, write the date on the bin. Don't forget that part. When it comes to your incubator, you don't need anything too fancy. You can even use the $40 Little Giant incubator from Fleet Farm, to be honest. But what we're using is a chicken egg incubator, and we used this back when we were raising quail. But we tweaked it so that it stays at a lower temperature for the snakes. And inside, we have several different trays, so we can house quite a few eggs. And these normally would rotate back and forth for bird eggs, but we stopped that so because eggs with uh, reptiles you don't want to rotate at all. So we are going to slide these in. I'm actually going to switch. I have some egg eating snake eggs in here that I'm just going to move to a different level. And we're going to set this probe directly inside of the tray so that it reads where the eggs are at and their temperature and humidity level. And we're set. We came home to a surprise just now. Even though we put the 24 eggs in the incubator, we have a bonus one. 25. That looks good. So we'll bring this downstairs and put him with his friends. Uh, we'll put him with these. There's a little more room in this tray. Actually, I'm going to make a note. This is egg 25. 